Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm here to do a quick review of Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli. My goodness, something is peeling off the front of it like some sort of weird skin. We have a lot of things to say about this. First off, you may notice I'm wearing black nail varnish. This is a relic of my punk rock tag, which I guess I'll link to below so that you know what I'm talking about. We're just going to have to deal with it because I filmed this review and everything went wrong. So I actually filmed it, encoded it, edited it, did all that stuff, and then deleted all of the files because that seemed like a good idea uh, including the fully rendered version that I meant to upload to YouTube and instead just deleted it so I'm back to do another review of it however that's probably for the best because I went through all the different flags in it and it took it was like an 18 minute review and I don't want this to take too long so I buddy read this with uh, Graham Quigley and Angela Hart from Books From My Heart and Chloe from Brunette Brit 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 Sorry, Chloe. Got your channel name wrong there. Chloe from Brunette Bibliophile. Obviously, this is Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda. There's lots of, you know, people have discussed it to death already, really. I mean, it's already turning into a film. Maybe this is a point for a discussion video. Let me know if you want me to do this, because I know um, Steve, Steve Donahue posted a video a little bit about this recently, and uh, talking about the difference between a review and a response, and for me, I find them that they're one and the same. So I have this kind of belief, I guess, where there's, you know, there's the physical object of the book and then every time somebody reads it, then the context in which they read it, the two of those get added together to make the experience of that book. So I don't think there's necessarily such a thing as a, a fully impartial review. Even like a, a structured critical analysis of it will have these inbuilt biases based on whoever's you know, carrying out the analysis. The reason I'm talking about this is because I didn't enjoy this book too much, but I didn't enjoy it too much because I couldn't relate to Simon's experience of an American school. It was so far remote from my school. I put on my uh, Goodreads review, so at my school, um, there was an ex-pupil burned part of it down while I was still a student, so we had to get these, like, uh, you know, like the portable cabin things. We had to get those portable cabins because we had no school because half of it had burned down. And then somebody got hit in the face with a metal pole as well. I remember that and his eye was like, his eye was out here somewhere. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty grim. But anyway, at Simon's school, there's all these different things. Like they have gender bender day, which just would not have been a thing at my school. For a start, my school was, I guess, a religious school. But I don't know. I just, I can't see that kind of thing happening in a British school. Like we, we didn't even do like, cause they're having all these things. They had a, like, um, oh, what was it called? They had a, like a march, not a march. They had a parade. They had a parade. Um, they had homecoming, which is a thing. Apparently they have had gender bender, obviously. Halloween was a massive deal in this as well. And that's never been like, it's just a cultural thing. It just doesn't tie in with my own sort of perspective of being that age and then a lot of the references they had as well so in terms of the public popular culture references that the characters made half the time i didn't know who they were talking about and the other half i did know who they were talking about but it seems super specific by the end of it i kind of felt alienated towards the group of friends in the book because i felt like i was almost eavesdropping on this on their lives you know i actually really like the romance in it funnily enough and i normally don't like romance in books but i think because the way this romance is structured, it's kind of like a who done it. My only problem with that per se is that who Blue turns out to be, I don't think is given enough airtime. So if it was a who done it, you'd be disappointed because there aren't enough clues given that it could be him. That said, I mean, I did actually, I think the last third of this book was my favourite part of it. Just with the, I think, seeing Simon come out and kind of grow into himself, he wasn't necessarily this is another thing he wasn't necessarily a character i particularly liked i think he liked to rebel even when he didn't have something to rebel against and i guess that is a 16 year old trait you know but uh, or 17 i think he turned i think he turned 17 in this i can't remember he he complained about his teachers because they told him what to learn about and what to think but they're just teaching from a syllabus and he complained about his parents because they were mad that he was drunk and he was like would you have preferred i lied and it's like no, I think they would have preferred he didn't get drunk, mate. I think that's the point. Speaking of him getting drunk, they get drunk at a gay restaurant, which I don't really know. Is that a thing? And uh, there was this bit where there was one paragraph where it said all the foods were innuendos. And so it was like sausages and buns, blah, blah, blah. And then two paragraphs later, someone has some chicken wings. And I spent about 20 minutes trying to figure out what innuendo a chicken wing is meant to be. I did think a rainbow cheese sandwich would have gone down nicely at that place though. But equally as well, they were serving um, all these underage kids booze. You know, they were listening to bassy music and stuff. And it's like, 
I don't know, a restaurant here, you'd be lucky to get music, to be honest. <laughs> like, So I don't know, it just seems strange, but I'm probably not the target audience for this, and it was fine. I didn't enjoy it as much as Turtles All The Way Down, and I didn't massively enjoy that, so I thought this was okay. And actually, I think the, the film looks better than the book, dare I say it. I'm kind of... One of the reasons why I thought it'd be fine to reshoot this video anyway is that I'm, I'm nervous about this. And this is something new to me. Like, I've run a book blog for years, but obviously I've only recently started booktubing. And I get nervous knowing that people are going to watch this. And, like, this is a lot of people's favourite book. And I don't mean any disrespect by it. It just... For me, it, it, it didn't really... It was difficult for me to relate to. I mean, Simon himself as a character was pretty well-rounded. It's just, again, I don't know if I particularly like Simon. I did... My main... My favourite part of the book was the email exchanges, to be honest. So anyway, rating time. I gave it a 3.75, which I believe is my first 3.75. Maybe I did one before. I don't know. Like I said, I've I already kind of read and shot this. So now I'm, <laughs> now I'm trying to do my best from memory. It was okay. And, yeah, I just, I would have enjoyed it a lot more if it had been more relatable to my school experience. It was, I think I said in my original video, I was like, it might as well have been a fantasy. Like, I could imagine what was being talked about, but I had no, nothing to ground it upon, you know. And for me, that was kind of a shame because I wanted to relate, you know, I really wanted to like this book. And I wanted to relate to the characters and I wanted to be able to go like, oh yeah, that was like, you know, how I grew up and stuff. But I can see how this would be a lot of fun and very relatable. It is fun, actually. I mean, it's sad at points, but mostly fun. And it would be good if you were basically born in the 21st century and went to school in America. I'm keen to hear your thoughts, so let me know what you thought about this. Especially if, like, you're from a working class British background. I'm keen to hear what Graham thinks, because Graham's Scottish and I don't know how... In fact, he told, he said in one of the emails that a lot of the references were going over his head. And, and some of those for th were for things that I did get as well, so... I do think it's a book that knows its target audience and caters to its target audience. And if you're not that target audience, it almost pushes you away from it. And I think that's a shame. But yeah, so that's what I thought about Simon versus the Homo Sapiens agenda. So, you know, please let me know what you thought with a comment. I'm worried this is going to get lots of dislikes. But if you want to dislike, I guess, dislike away. Personally, I've never got why you would dislike a booktube video like... I don't know, maybe that's just me. I only dislike BuzzFeed when they do really stupid shit. <laughs> I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye.